Hey, welcome RBT fans to our monthly raise outlook. We were put up against some tough teams this month, and we came out of it okay. Our record was even at 13 and 13. Um, I think it could have been better, but you know we're starting to miss Evan Longoria and Desmond Jennings. We've been missing them a lot. Um, speaking of Jennings. He has been running well in with the Stone Crabs and with the Bulls. He is on track to join the Rays in New York on Tuesday. He should be leading off that game unless Madden does something crazy with Pena leading off. Uh, Longoria still looks to be two to three weeks from rehab. Madden said he will go to the on the road trip uh, where he will take grounders and BP like he has. Um. He hasn't been taking grounders like a regular third baseman. He has been taking them from the knees. Um, but even a bigger story, the Rays bullpen. Yes, the Rays bullpen in May posted an ERA of 2.1, which is an MLB best. Mostly due to the huge turnaround of Peralta from the beginning of the season. McGee, he is been totally lights out and Rodney and Davis Rodney is 16 for 17 on save opportunities uh Davis has a 190 something ERA I believe and that has been a huge really part of the missing part you know it's no Desmond Jennings no Evan Longoria but you have the bullpen which will keep that lead Another huge story, Matt Joyce. Now, can I just tell you, he has proved the team and Madden wrong by saying, I can play every day. He is hitting better against lefties than righties. He had two grand slams in one month, in the month of May. They were six days apart. One against the Braves, one against Boston. Both of those games, the Rays won. And now we move on to one of the really the worst series we've had, I believe. Yeah, uh, other than the Red Sox one in the beginning of the season, the White Sox series. Now, the Rays didn't capitalize at all on their scoring chances, if they had any, you know. Um... It was a total disaster. Even though we saw Matt Moore really turn around his season in the first game, you know, seven innings pitch, 10 strikeouts, four hits, two earned runs, and one walk, which is something I really like to see from him. You know, he has that kind of stuff. He has no hitter stuff. We'll get to that in a couple minutes. While in the next game, Matt Moore really proved his point that he was totally on, on, on top of everything because Shields... Let the Sox blow it up and in six innings with 10 hits, Turner, 10, and 10 runs, one walk, and eight strikeouts. Now with the Matt Moore game, we also saw a Lakewood graduate. I forgot his name. Who cares? He's from the White Sox. Uh, and he threw for 15 strikeouts. Most of them were on the slider. You know, we're, we're aggressive on that. And... What else can I say? He went seven, seven and two thirds, I believe, until the bullpen had to kick in. Um, David Price on Friday against the Orioles. Now you can't tell him you didn't think he was going to get a perfect game or maybe maybe a no hitter. Not not a perfect game. All right, a no hitter. Um, he was very close to it. Uh, I think Jeff Neiman is the closest pitcher so far to get as close to a no-hitter as Matt Garza had one. Uh, but Neiman won seven and two-thirds last season without allowing a hit. But here we saw David Price. He was just totally focused. He was throwing strikes. He was attacking the zone. And he was giving a 5-0 lead early. Um... Until Matt Wieters in the fifth inning 
with one out, got a hit. Well, you know how that stuff works. He had perfect game stuff with him, as Elliot Johnson said in a tweet. Um, going on to the overall rotation, uh, I believe it's settled down, with the exception of, really, James Shields. James Shields has been an up-and-down kind of guy. He won his first three, and then he lost one. Yeah, you know, it, it happens. Um, the Rays also called up Hideki Matsui, the big signing, other than Carlos Pena and Luke Scott. Uh, he impressed. Uh, he hit a home run on his second at-bat with the Rays. Uh, he has a season, He has two on the season with four RBIs and two runs scored with two hits. Uh, four hits, my bad. Yeah. Um, Hideki Matsui is... I believe going to play a lot, uh, maybe splitting time at DH. Uh, Carlos Pena and Luke Scott can split time at first base. Uh, Desmond Jennings, BJ Upton, and Hideki Matsui can split time in the outfield. Um, on to the Jennings part again. Uh, Rhymes or Thompson? I'm not sure who's going to be sent down. They're both very good at speed, but... Rhymes has an upside to him. He has that hit in him, you know? It's Thompson just has the one hit in his 13-year career. Uh, and that came with the Rays on his debut. Uh, but I believe, yeah, they're going to send, send down Thompson. And they'll call him up later when they send down, send down some other people. We're going to need speed in the next couple of months. Uh, now to the stats. Uh, we're going to focus on three players, uh, Scott, Joyce, and Pena. Scott has nine home runs with 35 RBIs with a 225 batting average. The expectations from him as of now uh, are that he's going to be hitting 27 home runs with 105 RBIs. Now, I heard him say that he wanted to go 300, 30, 100, which is... Batting average, 300, home runs, 30, RBIs, 100. So he's probably going to need to step up a little bit more and use the whole field like he has been. He's got two opposite field home runs back-to-back. -back. So if he starts to use the whole field, he's going to be set. Joyce has nine home runs with 29 RBIs, and he's batting 289. He's expected to hit 27 bombs with 87 RBIs. So... We're not concerned about those two people. You know, they're going to produce. We know that. Um, the only person we're concerned with right now is Carlos Pena. Right now, he has 62 strikeouts. And he is expected to strike out 201 times. And he's going to have 24 home runs with 75 RBIs, if we're lucky. Because he's, he's totally cold right now. Uh, the Rays, as of June 3rd, ranked 17th overall in runs scored with 222, 26th in batting average at 237, 13th on on base percentage at 322, and 18th in slugging at 390. The Rays now have the best record in the American League East, which is why we're in first place, which is 31 and 23. Now, the whole AL East right now is separated by two and a half games. Yes, that's from first to second. The next series against New York really is going to put pressure on us. If we lose two, we're screwed. We're not in first place. We're, we're prob we probably won't even be in second. Um, yep, uh, the, the Rays are going to New York to take on the Yankees on Tuesday. And the matchups look like this. Shields, which who is 6-3, and three, will go against Andy Pettit, who is 2-2. Two and two. Uh, David Price, 7-3, will go against Ivan Nova, 6-2. Hellickson, who is 4-2, just came off a really good outing, you know, but he he gave up those two runs and lost the game. Uh, against Sabathia, who is 7-2, I, I really like the last, well, all three matchups are really nice. And now after this New York, this New York series, the entire league will move into interleague series. This is the fun part. The Rays are missing their top, their second hits leader in 
interleague play who is Evan Longoria with 73 hits. BJ Upton is a leader as of now. Uh, the Rays will have their toughest challenge yet in, these, in this coming month. We'll go against the Marlins two times over there and at home. The Nationals and Bryce Harper, who is totally on fire. Have you seen his stats? He's giving me, like, um, yeah, 48 points in the past two weeks on my fantasy team. And then the Mets and David Wright and Philadelphia Phillies and Hunter Pence. That is going to be one hell of a matchup. I hope we sweep them for some revenge from 2008 because we really didn't deserve to lose that. I mean, we, maybe we did. I'm not sure, you know. It, it all happens for a reason. So, guys, remember to follow me on Twitter at George81394. It's J-O-R-G-E with the number is 81394. For all your race beneficials and gameplay updates and don't forget us to follow don't forget to follow us also on facebook at raise baseball talk thanks